Welcome to an Alfie James production, Lizzie's Big Day by Alfie James, performed by members of the Storybox Community Theatre Project and supported by the Arts Council England and the Regbridge Council. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. But I shall not have strength to carry out this resolution alone unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. I know that your support will be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow, and God bless all of you who are willing to share in it. Nonsense. That's just a dodgy eye. She's still got all her senses, even at her age. They, they were fine when I popped up there. I put that piggy box on on for them, which the, the twins brought with them. It used to be scrabbling and marbles in my day. The Xbox? And they, I think that's what they called it. I hope it was a suitable game. Some of those games are full of violence. I put one of my football games on. That's my boy. It's criminal how they didn't accept you into that poshy school. And for heaven's sake, Hal, please keep your hands on the wheel. And why you had to insist on bringing a plate of sausage rolls with you, I will never know. He was getting hungry, weren't you, Al? There's a time and a place. You know, you can go a little faster. We are on the outside lane. And there's a speed limit for a reason. Yeah, but... Be swinging around just like that. Why couldn't you let Brian drive? Oh, I don't know. Or I could have done. I've got my outfits. Bless you, my dear. This is probably not the time for that. There's nothing wrong with my drive. It's everybody else who has the problem, right, Al? Are you really sure that this is a good idea? It's going to be packed with people doing the same thing. We've got to do. I, I must be there. Then we'll get you there, my dear. Just watched it on the telly. It's all over the news. Dad! Roadhog! Get out of here, Flaming! I'm just making you very much up to drive properly. But it's your birthday. We were meant to have a happy party. And we can still have a happy party. It doesn't matter where Lizzie blows out her candles. Isn't that right, Lizzie? You're all too good to me. I I'm sorry to be such a pain. I know we all went to such trouble. Oh, don't be daft. It's not every day the Queen passes away. Some things are more important. And if you want to go to London on your birthday, then we're bleeding go to London. And for Christ's sake, Al, put your foot down. I could have walked faster than this. That, or move into the inside lane. And are you sure that that nurse working? She hasn't said a word in ages. Probably can't get a word in ages. Oh, you cheeky sod. Yep, I'm on top of it. Don't you worry. Did you remember to pack Lizzie's wheelchair? And the picnic basket with all the food in it. Oh, and the bottles of water. Aye, aye, Captain. I swear, organising this family is going to be the death of me. None of you ever take things seriously. Mike's just texted me. He can't make it. He's stuck with a client. Ah, a client. That's his latest excuse, is it? I know what you think, but he's not like that anymore. He's changed. Don't listen to them, love. I'm sure he has. Oh, you'll be telling how he is. He's the funny for next. It's going to be the end of an era. The longest reigning monarch in British history. She was a remarkable lady. And I bet she didn't have all this stress organising family events. Seven years on the throne. But she saw some things. I remember when it all started. Or when it officially became real, should I say. What do you mean? Her coronation. I was only a small child. Wasn't that when you met Bertha? Indeed it was. It was one of the happiest days of my life. There was a huge breath of excitement in the air. Are you okay now? No? Nah.
leaving her home on what must surely be the greatest day of her life, Queen Elizabeth drives to her coronation. All night through, indeed longer than that, crowds have waited for this moment as the golden coach appears in view for the first time. The long planning, the careful rehearsals, the flurry of preparations, all have reached their fruition in this dramatic opening of a dramatic and historic occasion. only yesterday. I was only a little girl. It was 1953. We stepped on the pavement outside Westminster Abbey with the whole family to join excited crowds. My mother had insisted that we arrive there at 5am to secure a spot. And it was a good job that we did. There were thousands of people there. All I could remember was my mother's face. She was beaming from cheek to cheek with wild excitement. The Jones family also joined us. They were our new neighbours from Four Girls Down. My mother was terribly neighbourly like that. She thought that it would be nice to invite them along with us. Has everyone had their jam sandwiches? Mother, I can't see. The Jones family had brought along their Aunt Bess. She was a rather flamboyant lady, standing right in front of me wearing a huge, Colourful hat with a union flag on it. Oh, goodness me. I'm so sorry, my lovely. I didn't realise. You must move in front of me. Isn't this why you're excited? Oh, would anyone like a lollipop? I brought plenty. She can't go anywhere without those flaming things. I need all the sugar in order to put up with your lousy jokes. Well said, Bess. Well said. Guess that put me in my place, didn't it, John? Indeed. Can't believe we're all still awake. We'd only had three sleeping bags amongst us all, but Mum had insisted on bringing blankets, but it was still cold and terribly uncomfortable. The Jones family were a kind bunch. There was Dennis and his wife, although she had to stay at home because she wasn't feeling very well. And they had a little boy about the same age as me. Bertie, would you like another jam sandwich? No. No, thank you. Where have your manners gone? Jumped on board the 92 bus. Honestly, sometimes I wonder which one of you is the grown-up. There was so much going on. The good-humoured crowds were mainly in groups, laughing, chatting, torches flashing. Every so often a group would break into song and surrounding groups would join in. It would be taken up by everyone. Seven times they joyfully call us. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London so. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of her wherever I go. I get a funny feeling inside of me just walking up and down. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London town. Why don't you go and stand with Bertie, Lizzie? But I want to stay here with Aunt Bess. Bertie was a really mischievous boy and terribly scruffy. His knees were always muddy where he was rolling around the dirt playing marbles and his shoots were scuffed at the toes where he loved playing football. His mother had made him wear his school uniform because it was the only smart thing he had. Stop playing with your cap, Bertie. But it itches. Well, if you had had a bath like your mother told you to, you wouldn't have dirty and scruffy hair, would you? <laughs> I bet Lizzie doesn't complain about having a bath. I hate baths. So do I. Suddenly, a distant cheer went up as the crowd rushed a well-known personality. The cheering grew louder and louder as the carriage approached us and we could see for ourselves Winston Churchill and later the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret. Look, there's Churchill. I saw him. I saw him. We waved our flags high up in excitement and glee as they rode past. And just at that moment, the Queen of Hell arrived in a magnificent coronation coach pulled by eight horses they called it 
the gold state coach. It was the one used by the royal family. It had been used at the coronation of every British monarch since George the Fourth. By Jove, that's one out of a coach, that. Doesn't she look fine, dear? Doesn't she look fine? Less of the wandering eyes, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd erupted as the Queen went by and roared with appreciation. Are we going to be on television? We might be. Apparently it was the Duke's idea, but her match approved it. It's the first time that they are filming inside Westminster Abbey. It didn't matter that we finished wet and bedraggled. All that I've missed some of the most important moments. Bertie and I laughed and giggled as our fathers put us on their shoulders and we dripped hold of our homemade periscopes. This is the best day ever. It really is. Oh, look at these two young ones. They will be proper sweet on each other in a few years' time. Ugh, no we won't. I hate girls. That's disgusting. Oh, leave them alone. Ah, you're such a tease. Bertie was the first proper friend that I ever had. Later that day, we walked to Buckingham Palace. I remember Bertie and I standing at the huge tall gates and peering through. My dad said that they have a million rooms. And the Queen has to wear her crown all the time and she sleeps really proper posh like. I wonder which window is first? They all are, silly. I wish that I was the Queen. She's really pretty. I'd love to be Philip and carry that sword around. I'd fight up all the bad guys and protect the Queen till the death. One day I'm going to meet the Queen. You can't meet the Queen, silly. I am, just for you to see. It is a pretty awesome place to live. But it's just her house, really. Like, we got ours, it's just bigger like. I wonder how many lavies he's got. Lavies? You really are silly. <laughs> what? Who would have thought that building would become our special place? It is a pretty amazing house. Growing up on our street in Redbridge was always eventful. From noisy neighbours to dodgy dealings and bust-ups between families, you could say that it was a typical, ordinary county street. But like most streets like that, it was more than that. Sure, we had our fallouts, but it was a tight community. When push came to shove, we all had each other's back. It was like when Billy Davy came home one night from having a couple of bevies, and he fell asleep cooking some toast and burnt the house down. We didn't see him go homeless. We all sorted him out with food and things until he got back on his feet. My mum even washed his underpants. It was the same sense of friendship that was installed in Bertie and me. Sure, he was a boy, but he wasn't so bad. He even taught me to play football. And there was that time I put makeup on his face for a dare and his car walked in. He nearly had a heart attack, took his belt to him, but we don't talk about that. He was a good friend. The Queen was out making friends too. It was that year that the Kennedys came to visit. <laughs> It's a long time since anyone landed in London for a welcome, both official and unofficial, as big as this. According to protocol, the arrival of President Kennedy and his wife from Vienna follows the set pattern. Premier Macmillan there to greet them, the machinery of news, the long walk from the aircraft among the gold braid. But although the drill is as stereotyped as a minuet, there's more to it than that. For one of the two most powerful men in the world has just come from meeting the other one. And to everyone's delight, including Lady Dorothy McMillan's, he has brought his wife, Jackie. I don't mind admitting that Bertie had his work cut out. I did have a wild imagination. I loved making up stories and acting them out, even as a teenager. I was a passionate writer. I absolutely loved hearing the news of the Kennedys coming. I admired, admired Jackie Kennedy so much, whereas Bertie just thought she was a... Total babe. Well, 
she is. My imagination often got me into trouble, though, and made me the unpopular with other children at school. But Miss Kimball, our English teacher, she saw my potential. Oh, Lizzie, you're such a sweet girl, completely unlike the other school children here. And please don't take offence when I say that you are rather strange. I love your passion for words, your love for kings and queens, dragons and magical fairies. You remind me of a younger version of myself. Miss Kimball was rather a wonderful teacher. The ones you find playing heroes in the royal fairy stories, soft and warm-hearted, but hid a terribly sad secret that made you just fall in love with her even more. For Miss Kimball, it was said that she was unable to have children of her own, but that just made her love all her students that much more. She sported a pair of spectacles and a woolly cardigan which made her look like a librarian, and she spoke in a soft, kind voice. And she had the most amazing tiny little hands. You really should go out and play with the other school children, Lizzie. Oh, I'd much rather sit in here talking about the wonderful stories by Jane Austen and the magical adventures by J.R.R. Tolkien. It's far more sugar fabulous. Oh, sugar fabulous. It's my new word. I've made it up. I put it into the book you gave me. The real reason I didn't want to go outside was because I knew what would be awaiting me if I did. I could never tell Miss Kimball that. But it was no use. Miss Kimball insisted that I got fresh air, which I find rather ironic considering we live in London. But she'd forgotten about the great fog. Thought you'd escape, didn't you? Look, I think she's trying to ignore us. Think she's in another world, don't she? It actually doesn't. Where are you this time? Space? The fairy castle? The Lost Island? No, she's in Narnia. I think she's gonna cry. Why would I cry? Because you've got no friends. Everyone thinks you're weird. Yep, she's gonna cry. Look! Wah, wah. Empty your pockets. Just a few pennies and a couple of gum drops. I'll take them. You're imbeciles, both of you. What? Speak English? Look it up in the dictionary. Tell us a story then, girlie. Go on. No. Do you want a snuff or sandwich? Oi, didn't your mother tell you that you shouldn't be girls? She's not a girl, Bertie. She's a weirdo. A weird teacher's pet. Teacher's pet. Teacher's pet. And you're all going to be nasty into the middle of next Wednesday, don't you, Mark? You sweet on her, Bertie. Beat it. All right, Princess? You didn't have to do that. Could have handled it. Sure. Want some of my apple? Mom still insists on sticking one in my bag. Still thinks I'm five, she does. I saw your Sally earlier. She was showing everyone that Beatles record she got. She's gone Beatles mad, she has. She saved up all her pocket money for that record. Dad said it won't last, though. How's your mum? She had a good day yesterday. The doctor said it's best to stay indoors with the cold. You don't have to stay with me if you want to go and play football with your friends. Nah, it's okay. I don't mind staying here with you. What's that you got? It's my memory book. I'm writing down all the inspirational things which happen, the people I meet. Oh, and new words. Planning on losing your marbles, are we? No, Bertie. But I need to keep a record of all my ideas. It's what writers do. Miss Kimball said so. Bet you got something about the Kennedys. Of course. When one princess meets another. My dad thinks Nancy is so stunning. He said if he could have one night with her... I, I think I know the rest. I still think that the Queen is the best. She's amazing. I'm going to meet her one day, when I'm a famous author. So, you got anything about me in that special book of yours? Maybe. Maybe. On the back page, I scribble the non-significant bits. Things which irritate me. Ouch. Oh, you know I don't mean it. <laughs> I could always wind them up. It was so easy. We were such great friends. He was always there. 
always protecting me. It wasn't long before that friendship began to turn into war. My dad's going to kill me for leaving the rest of the group, Bertie. I'm going to be grounded till I'm 90. Oh, live a little. We're 14, Bertie. We should not be walking the streets at this time of night. So did you enjoy the concert? It was all right. Who was your favorite? They were all very energetic. <laughs> energetic. Oh, you do crack me up sometimes, Lizzie. I think John was the best. Think I might get his hair same as mine. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh, you're gonna get us arrested. Penny Lane, you're in my heart, you're in my soul. Buckingham Palace. Still wonder how many lattice they got. They said she shed a tear when she got back from visiting the Abathon Mine village. Horrible what happened. 116 children died when that tip collapsed. Aunt Bess sobbed when she heard it on the radio. First time I ever seen her cry. Dad reckons you can't hear a single child's voice in that place now. Terrible. Do you think it's hard to show emotions when you're the queen? Sure. It's kind of a losing battle. She gets slated for being weak if she did and heartless if she does. I wouldn't like to be in her shoes. They said that she sat with the mothers drinking tea and just listened to them for ages. Said they didn't know what to do having the queen come for tea. I guess at the end of the day, she was just a mother like the rest of them. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah. Come on, sing with me. No. You think you lost your love? Well, I saw her yesterday. It's you she's thinking of. And she told me what to say. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're mad you are, Bertie. Do you think this place is magical? I know that sounds silly, but when I'm here, I just feel safe and special, like she's watching over. You are special, Lizzie. What? <laughs> you're pretty special in the head, Lizzie. That's what you are. You're, you're such a... Lost for words, are we? Quick, look at that book of yours. Immature juvenile. <laughs> Don't hurt. Well, it is special, because it's our place. Where we first became proper friends, isn't it? Hello, hello, and uh, what's going on here then? What's a couple of kids like you doing out at this time? Waiting, Waiting for, for the, the 92, 92 bus. bus. What the bleeding? It was the first time that I started to see Bertie differently. I don't know why the place had an effect on us. It was our special place. It was as if for that split moment we became a king and queen ourselves. It was our special place. It was one of the Queen's biggest regrets not visiting the Abba Farm community sooner. The Queen's bond with Abba Farm endured throughout her reign. Elaine Richard, who lost her nine-year-old daughter Sylvia in the tragedy, said the Queen had promised she would return to open the new school when one was built. She did keep that promise and went on to visit the village a further three times. The 70s was the decade where the Queen reached out to her people. In the Commonwealth and back home, getting closer to us than ever before. It may have been a time of political turmoil, as strikes and power cuts crippled the country and terrorism struck at the heart of the nation. But despite our problems, for the Queen and for us, it proved one of the happiest decades of her reign. It was the summer of 1971. Things were beginning to intensified with the Northern Ireland conflict, and the Queen had, had done her first official walkabout. Meanwhile, I proposed to Sam. We were planning on a, a winter wedding. We'd met at a Beatles concert a year before, singing to Sergeant Peppers. Mm. Things had, had, had been a bit awkward since then, no, of course. Things haven't been good at home for Bertie. His, his mother's illness had, had got worse, and she was now in hospital. 
Bertie had, had gone off the rails, and we were seen about the town regularly with different girls. And he had a, a, a few brushes with the law. Uh, Lizzie was uh, doing her best to be a, a good friend, but feeling as if she was um, banging her head against a wall. And, and her friends could see it too. Jane was one of her oldest friends from school, and Jane loved guard cardigans. But, uh, we're not going to go into that story. You are my oldest friend, Lizzie. I'm sorry, but you need to put that boy behind you. I know it's your childhood sweetheart, but he ain't no good no more. I can't give up on him. I know he likes it. Oh, you nearly kissed once when you were 14. You were kids. It's difficult. He's got so much going on. Mm -hmm. That doesn't stop him from playing the field with different girls from one end of town to the next, does it? You're better than him. You're almost, you're almost off to uni. When he's with me, he's different. <laughs> he's trouble. Mm -hmm. You can be so naive sometimes. I suppose it's because you've always had your head inside a book. But, you see, the good in people too much. You deserve better. What about that guy from your O-level class? What was his name? Nick Carson. Mm, he's more your type. Nicholas Thomas Andrew Carson was his name. He'd taken a shine to Lizzie the very first time they had met in their first lecture class. She'd roasted him on a debate on whether women writers were equally experienced in writing about the struggles of modern society. Nick was a rather posh kid who'd grown up in pr private boarding schools. He spoke down on most of the other students and had some degree of arrogance to his personality. He was a true conservative, which made Lizzie's blood boil. He would always wear designer jumper and brown court trousers and expensive leather shoes. Despite this, Lizzie had warmed to him, particularly as she had helped him to mellow over time. They had even started dating, but Lizzie refused to acknowledge that they were a couple. He's nice enough. He likes you, and at least he's stable. That's not fair. He won't mess you around. I'm sorry to burst in. Have you seen him? Seen who? What's happened? Have you seen Bertie? His mother died this morning, and um, he's run off. I'm worried. I don't know where he's gone. I'll find him. Lizzie? Not now. Lizzie? I knew exactly where he was gone. time that Lizzie had arrived, the, the rain was pouring down and it was getting dark. The traffic was still buzzing in by, by the, uh, through the big city that uh, never sleeps, but the, there seemed to be a rare but peaceful silence, as if someone had chosen to turn the volume right down. I don't know why I came here. It's our place. Stupid. No, it's not. I thought I might see her. If I sat here long enough, maybe she might come out and ask why I'm so sad. And I thought that maybe she might be able to pull a few strings, being the queen and everything. Maybe she could bring her back. I told you it's stupid. I feel so... I'm here. I'm there. I'd like to say that Bertie settled down after that night outside Buckingham Palace. The grief has a nasty way of taking a long time to overcome, if that's even possible. I suppose you just find ways of getting by, carrying on. His behaviour continues to be unpredictable. 
I lost count of the times he would arrange to meet and would never show up. He'd disappear for days and then turn up and just want to fall asleep with his head on my lap. It was heartbreaking to see. I didn't know how to help. A few months later, she received the news that she was going to be accepted into university. She was going to be reading English literature. It wasn't the only she wasn't the only one to be celebrating though. The Queen and Prince Philip were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary and preparations were busy going forward to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. Bertie also had some news of his own. I can't believe you got into university. My princess is actually going. And that was me thinking you always believed in me. I did, but it's, it's just, I never thought that. The day would come. We're not kids anymore. Come with me. What? It could be a fresh start for you. We can easily get a job close by. We can see each other every day. It would be great fun. I'm joining up. Joining up? I spoke to Dad. I've done all the NJ exams and filled out the forms and passed the medic. Oh. You didn't say. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. It's just everything has been such a mess since. I can't do this anymore. I need to sort my head out. It might be good for me. You don't need to explain. We're just friends. It's not as if... Lizzie. I need to go. Silly song. What? All he did for the next few days was moving about. He had an even longer face than normal. Are you going to sit there looking like a miserable song forever? Or are you going to do something about it? What do you mean? She means, if you like her, then go and tell her before it's too late. She's off to university today. She's catching the train. Wouldn't work. She's off to uni and I'm joining up. Besides, she can do so much better than me. I'm a nobody. Uh, you know, your father used to think the same thing when he was courting your mother. I'll tell you one thing. When she brought him round for tea, I don't mind admitting that I took one look at him and thought he was a right, scruffy git. He was too sure of himself too. But you know what? It didn't matter what I thought. You only had to look at your mother's eyes to know how much she loved your father. He may not have had much money or a decent job, but the way stuck by your mother when she was ill and never gave up on her. Well, he proved me wrong. And not only are you a chip of the old block, but you've got her inside you too. I'm nothing like her. You kidding me? The moment I held you in my arms for the first time, I noticed how much you were like her. You had her sparkling eyes. Had her lungs too. Her determination too. You know, you almost died. Your core thingy got stuck around your neck and you stopped breathing. But you didn't give up. You never did. You've always made us proud. How can I be happy? Mum. You think she want you sitting on your backside feeling sad the rest of your life? She want you living, getting out there, living every moment and enjoying every second and not looking back. Do you like this, Lizzie? Yes, I do. Do you love her? Bess, you're embarrassing the boy. Well? Yeah, I, I do. Fetch the car, then he's... The whole journey, Bertie was as nervous as anything, but I looked at him and I couldn't have been any prouder. The station was crowded with the usual hustle and bustle, people chatting and saying goodbye, the sound of trains arriving and departing. She's on platform two. Well, what are you waiting for? Go see her. Oh, Bob! Hello, Princess. You came? Of course I came. I had to give you something else to write about in that memory slip of yours, didn't I? Train's now boarding, miss. Got to go, Bertie. Wait. 
Train's about to leave, Miss. Lizzie. Miss? Yes. I, 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 can I write you? Yes. Yes. Goodbye, Bertie. A few seconds later, she was gone. For the Queen, the 80s was a time of family joy and celebration. Her busy engagements took her from our doorstep to the farthest corners of the Commonwealth. But during the decade, her nation would change faster than ever. Through politics, economic upheaval and war. Yet despite our troubles, the Queen remained as steadfast as always. They say that university are the best days of your life. And I have to say, Lizzie wasn't disappointed. Those years really opened her eyes and helped her grow as a person. It was the first time that she was really taken seriously as a writer. She even penned her first novel. It was a time for making friends, spending too much time in the pub, knitting a thigh that last all night, and then sharing a bag of chips on the walk back to the dodgy clink infested student house. Bertie stayed true to his word and wrote to her once a week, although he wasn't ever much of a writer and his letters were often short. But it's the effort that counts, isn't it? And Lizzie was always looking forward to reading them. He often promised to come and visit when he was on leave. I never did. I don't know whether he was embarrassed about what happened on the, that platform. She always felt that he had wanted to say something, but didn't. I graduated and I got myself a teaching job part-time whilst I was stalking all of the local publishers. The letters have faded out in recent years and news of the Falklands War had sent shivers down my spine. The thought of him getting hurt worried me. Oh, and I was engaged to be married. Sorry, I almost forgot to mention that. Nick and I had bumped into each other about a year ago and things had slowly progressed. He was still a posh conservative figure at times, but he had tamed and I had become fond of him. But with the wedding day drawing near, I couldn't help but feel somewhat on edge. Is there a reason you dragged me out here, Dad? Can I just spend some quality time with my daughter? It's freezing. We could have just <coughs> gone down the pub or had a cup of tea. I just thought that, that it would be nice to go for a walk. Do you remember when, when we brought you the, here for the coronation? I was frozen then, too. I put a... You on my shoulders as, as we watched the Queen ride past in a carriage. Splendid sight it was. It was beautiful. Not as beautiful as you are. Are you all right, Dad? You know, we always thought that uh, it would have been you and uh, that um, young Bertie walking down the aisle. What sort of leading dark question's that? Nick is a good chap. He's a He's doing well for himself when we're working at that law firm. And you'll be well looked after. It's not a business deal. Most of the chaps around here work for Paul. Now wrong with that, you've worked for him all your life. Ain't got much to show for it then. You didn't do so bad. What's life and money? What are the best things that's come out of my life, Lizzie? I, I don't say that very often. You don't mean your, your mother proud. Is this why you brought me to Buckingham Palace? To tell me you're proud of me. It was always your favourite place. You used to always beg your mother and I to bring you here we were winning when we came up this way. I was very lucky when I met your mother. 
In fact, I hit the jackpot. But not all marriages are built on that strong love straight away. Sometimes they have to work on it. I see, I see now you look at me. I'm fond of him. But he's no Bertie. And that's okay for, for the time being. You, know, you, you can learn to love him. What's important is that you can take, he can take care of you. You don't need looking after. Yeah. It's all right to, to have second thoughts, but just give him a chance. You know? He, he's, a, he's got a strange taste in football, sure, you mean, but, but he's a good sort. I, I just want what's best for you. I don't need looking after. I know, but, but your mother's already bought a hat and, and, and you, you know how much she's uh, looking forward to wearing. Not to be a runaway bleeding bride. <laughs> That's my girl. The 90s would in many ways prove the most challenging decade of the Queen's reign. New institution should expect to be free from the scrutiny of those who give it their loyalty and support. Our nation was being transformed by technology, girl power and politics. In this celebrity-obsessed era, tradition looked set to be pushed aside in favour of the modern and the useful. But a new, reinvented royal family would emerge, more relaxed, open and in tune with the times. They were married. It was quite a nice thing to do. Nick's family insisted on paying the bill. Although most of us ordinary folk couldn't help feeling a little bit out of place. There wasn't even a sausage roll or a sausage on a stick in sight on the buffet table. But still, Lizzie looked grand. Bertie would have loved her. He was overseas on an exercise. Anyway, the marriage started off good. Two babies quickly followed within a year of one another. But the cracks soon started to show. You see, Nick wanted Lizzie to be at home. The two children gave him the perfect reason to assist upon this. I'm bored. I'm sick of these four walls. I can't, I can't breathe. But the more cracks appeared, the tighter Nick's grip became. We've got the children to think about. They need their mother. You said as soon as they started school, I could go back to work. We agree. No, we said we'd discuss it. I don't think it's for the best. What would you do anyway? You're too out of touch now. There's no reason for you to work. I'll look after you. And just as the Queen was going through the same turmoil with Prince Andrew's divorce and Prince Charles's separation from Diana, I walked out to him. It wasn't a difficult decision. I know that sounds harsh, but I never loved him. I never wanted to be kept. I packed a single suitcase, took the children and left. And that was it. Few could have predicted the explosive set of events that would come to define the first decade of the new millennium. This was a period overshadowed by terrorism and loss. When television provided us with a dose of reality. And the country went from boom to bust. But in these ever-changing and volatile times, the Queen's role became more vital than ever. further heartbreak in the 2000s. And since uh, her sister, Princess Margaret, sadly became ill and passed away. Then shortly after, the, the beloved Queen Mother passed away. I, it left a, a hole in the palace. Leaving Nick was, was probably the best for both of them. I mean, he went into uh, remarrying and has been happily married since. Um, she paints nails and glues uh, fake eyebrow, eyelashes on, on people. It was a, a few years later when, when our Lizzie saw Bertie again. 
It was a chance meeting. And guess where it was? outside Buckingham Palace, the, the night had ended and the crowd was slowly leaving when... Hello, Princess. Bertie, is that you? Oh my god, Al, look who it is! Hello, Bert, how are you? Not so bad. I didn't know you were here. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Come on, Al, let's go to find the pub. I'm gasping for that drink you promised me. You haven't changed a bit. Only aged a few years. How has it been? Too long. I'm sorry I stopped writing. You were deployed because of the Falcons, and then I heard that you got married. And Divorced, did? I'm sorry. It wasn't meant to be. And you? Never married. It's a shame. You would have made someone very lucky. We always keep meeting up here. Our special place. I'm sorry for being such a prat back then. You were never a prat. Plonker, maybe, but don't worry. I noted every silly thing you did on the back of my memory book. With all the other insignificant things in your life. Of course. Isn't it funny that some people have that instant connection? They can go for years without speaking and then instantly pick up where you left off, as if you've only been speaking to them the day before. They laughed and they giggled and for hours drinking tea. Neither of them realised that they'd been talking until the small hours. It did, didn't seem to matter. You really haven't changed one bit. Still the weird Lizzie, then. There was never anything weird about you. I should be getting home. I love you, Lizzie. What? Always did and always will. That's what I was trying to say on that platform. I was trying to tell you that I... No, you can't do this. Not now. Lizzie, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I need to go. I'm sorry. Well, let me walk you. I don't need no tea here. I'm sorry. The seventh decade of the Queen's reign would prove that she was still central to our national life, as she became Britain's longest-serving monarch. I declare open the games of London. She continued to uphold tradition whilst welcoming modernity. Oh, really? As we face times of uncertainty, <laughs> division, and tragedy, the Queen united us in reflection, celebration, and reconciliation. A new generation was learning by her example and we embrace them. Into her 90s, Queen Elizabeth was as popular as the day she was crowned. I haven't spoken to him since. But I thought that you loved him. She does. We're here. This is as close as we can get. So many people. So silent. It feels peaceful. Somber. Still. She was a beautiful and a strong lady who will be thoroughly missed. Her smile was always radiant. She was the grandma we all wanted. Jeff wants it me. It's a massive loss to everyone. It makes you realise that Remind you how important she was. It's huge, not just in the UK, but all over the world. Maria, how would be. She served our country with pride and dignity for 70 years. Susie Wanstead. Her Majesty was the one constant in all our lives. The Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort 
will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Hello, Princess. Happy birthday. been listening to an Alfie James production This Is Big Day by Alfie James, performed by members of the Storybox Community Theatre Project supported by Arts Council England and the Regbridge Council (laughs) 